Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durber with your family of Faith Victory Church right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And just delighted to be able to share with you the truths of God's Word once again. Luke one thirty seven says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And I just want to welcome you to this terrific Thursday. God is good, and uh, His Word is what we uh, center around on this program. The Word of God will change our lives. We've been studying last week and this week on the subject of the house of prayer. And uh, years ago, I wrote a book called The House of Prayer that I'm teaching out of. And uh, in uh, writing that book, I located 18 different prayers that uh, believers, uh, you and I, uh, should know about and know how to apply them for whatever kind of situation, need, desire uh, that may arise. And uh, to do that, uh, it has to be scriptural. Uh, and we've looked at uh, 13 different prayers already, and I don't have time to go through that. that, why, that that's why I'm offering this book, House of Prayer, uh, to get it in your hands so that you have this uh, prayer guide uh, to know how uh, to pray effectively for any situation that you'll ever encounter. And to get your own copy, uh, just call our office, 502-875-7886, or go to our website, faithvictorychurch.us, and then uh, scroll down to the bookstore, and you will locate it there. Now, we are on number 14 today, uh, starting out, and this is the prayer of release, the prayer of release. Now, we find this uh, in Hebrews eleven twenty one, where it says, By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph in worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. And when Jacob, uh, in Genesis forty nine thirty three, when you read the very account of this, when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed, and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. This is the prayer of release that works a lot of times in conjunction with the prayer of authority. In these scriptures that I just read, the patriarch Jacob was releasing his own physical life from earth. You and I have the power under certain conditions to release ourselves or our loved ones, even our pets. In other words, release them from this planet. I've released several people to move on to heaven, and they did so shortly, uh, most within a few minutes after I prayed. Some were in no physical condition to live any longer, while others just expressed that they were ready to go to heaven. They wanted to go home. The book of Proverbs instructs us that we have the power of death and life in our words, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So to pray the prayer of release, you must know that the person or pet you're about to release is ready to be released. Don't release somebody who's not saved to go to hell. Uh, this prayer of release is not a common everyday prayer, and it needs to be used wisely uh, for believers through the wisdom of God. My sister, uh, she was in a physical condition. She was extremely overweight, and her life was a mess, but she'd gotten her life right with Jesus. And I went to visit her in the hospital, and uh, I talked to her, and uh, she told me, uh, I'm, I'm going to pray the prayer of release over you. And she said, I have to do one more thing. I, and she, there was something that she had to say to one of her sisters, prayed the prayer of release for her after she said that uh, to uh, her sister, I think it was uh, two days later or whatever. As soon as she got that right, boom, she was gone. So, uh, I, and you know, I remember a, a situation, a family called me in and uh, their father was in this condition 
not responding. And uh, I talked to the family and told them, uh, you know, they didn't want to see him suffer or anything like that. He'd gotten his life right with the Lord. And I said, all right, uh, I'm going to pray the prayer of release. Uh, you go in and say anything you want to say uh, before I go in there. So all the family went in there. And afterwards, I went in there and released him. And he moved on to heaven just minutes later. And now, uh, to pray that prayer of release, you would pray it something like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release so-and-so from his or her life here on earth to his or her life, her home in heaven now. In Jesus' name, so be it. Amen. Same thing with a pet. I've done that with our pets. See? Now, let's move on to number 15, the prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, Colossians 4, 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So here we have the prayer of thanksgiving. Thankfulness should be included in all our prayers, but the prayer of thanksgiving is centered on giving God thanks for all that he has done and is doing in our lives. The prayer of thanksgiving is really a form of worship. There should be moments in our prayer times when we just shift into spontaneous thanksgiving for, the, for all that he has done. But then there should be other prayer times when we thank God on purpose for his goodness to us. So this is real uh, simple, the prayer of thanksgiving, but, but it needs to be something that we understand, not just at thanksgiving time around our big uh, turkey and ham uh, meal that we're about to eat. No, thanksgiving ought to be uh, daily, see? So to pray the prayer of thanksgiving, uh, you could pray it like this. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for all your goodness to me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for keeping me and my family safe. Thank you for your financial blessing in my life. Thank you for your word. Thank you for my church and pastor. Thank you for calling me and anointing me. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for your mercy and love towards me. Thank you for your strength in my life. Thank you that I know you in Jesus' name. So be it. Amen. So uh, that's the prayer of thanksgiving. And then number 16 is the prayer of tongues. Now, uh, a lot of times this is controversial, but let's just look at what the Bible says about it. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And there's a lot of controversy over what that is. But uh, let's go to the scripture with this. It says uh, that this is a prayer of tongues or praying in the spirit. And it's one of the most valuable prayers to learn. Uh, God gives to every believer who is baptized in the Holy Spirit a heavenly prayer language or tongue. We find that in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. It says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. The book of 1 Corinthians says that when we begin to pray the prayer of tongues, that our spirits are praying. But we don't always understand what exactly we're praying. The scriptures also reveal that when we pray the prayer of tongues, we are actually praying mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So when we don't know about what we should be praying or for whom to pray, or we've just run out of English words to pray, this valuable prayer of tongues assists us. Learning to pray the prayer of tongues will require time and persistence, but the harvest of praying that way is immeasurable. Most everything of major importance in my life, I can attribute to my, t my spending time in praying in tongues. Revelation of God's word will come, as well as knowing what to do and what not to do. Many times I've been faced with a situation about which I did not know how to pray effectively. So I just prayed the prayer of tongues and the answer was made evident to me. 
The answer doesn't always come at the exact time that I pray in tongues, but the answer always comes eventually when I pray that way diligently. To pray the prayer of tongues, you must first be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Once you've received your heavenly prayer language or tongues, you would pray after this manner persistently until you feel inside a peace, a calm in your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, I have a situation for which I don't know how to pray, but I'm going to pray in tongues over this, and I know you will help me to see what I should or shouldn't do. Then you begin to pray in tongues, and when you're finished, say something like this in English. Thank you for giving me the victorious insight in this area of my life. In Jesus' name, so be it. Amen. Now, I understand that that prayer right there uh, in a lot of circles is controversial, and I'm not here to argue with anybody, uh, and uh, I, I just know what works and has been working in my life and in the people that I've taught. And if you desire uh, to uh, pray that way and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, call our prayer line, 502-597-4357, and uh, tell the prayer minister there that you'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Or if you'd like more information on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, contact our office. 502-875-7886. I got a little book that I wrote that uh, we'll, we'll ship it out to you free of charge on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you can go through the scripture yourself and see verbatim what the Bible says about this uh, special gift uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit. And uh, to me, I wouldn't want to live a day on this planet apart from that. Now, uh, you don't have to uh, have the baptism of the Holy Spirit to uh, pray these other prayers, but, uh, you know, it, if you ask me what I thought was the most important prayer in this book, the, I would say the one that is necessary. But this prayer, uh, the, the praying in tongues, is so powerful, praying in your heavenly language, uh, that it covers every area. You can even when you don't know what to pray, the Spirit uh, prays uh, through you the perfect will of God. So if uh, you're interested in knowing more about that, call our office 502-875-7886. Or if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, call our helpline, 502-597-4357. And again, if you want your own copy of this book, House of Prayer, uh, you can go to our website, faithvictorychurch.us, and you can scroll down there to our bookstore. You'll find all kinds of uh, books there, and and uh, the House of Prayer is in that, and you can get that in your hands and teach it yourself, learn uh, these 18 prayers and share it with others and get results. So until tomorrow, this is Pastor Philip reminding you that Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. You be a blessing.